first one i'm going to start off this week with is actually one that premiered on uh cable streaming well if you got cable um and this is a showtime documentary and this is called all up in the bids and this is one is directed by sacha jenkins and it's a documentary film about the life and times of biz markey who was a really big figure in hip-hop in the early days especially i would say in that uh late 80s early 90s era he has um, a bunch of you know hits under his belt including um you got what i need i think that's probably his biggest record then you know things like uh nobody beats the biz um you know one of my favorites the vapors you know stuff like that and he's just so interconnected and responsible for helping launch careers of, of really big rappers at the time including rock him um, who he was a schoolmate with a uh, big daddy king kane who he actually discovered and and put him on with a deal and uh, actually employed him as a ghostwriter you know on a lot of uh the records and stuff like that and uh just how he himself got on so i do like this um the way this thing is filmed it's a documentary by sachi jenkins who has just been real prolific with documentaries he also did a documentary called burn uh motherfucker burn uh <laughs> did um bitching um the rick james documentary another documentary word is bond fresh dress he did the uh the three part uh mikes and men uh actually that might be four parts mikes and men uh wu-tang documentary that was really good um he also got a, another series that's out there called everything uh everything's going to be all white <laughs> so i think that's a historical documentary looking at some stuff another one called the rapture he also has that's one good on, dog um, that's a good dog, by the way. Yeah. He also has one on Louis Armstrong. Um, it's called Louis Armstrong's Black and Blues. So so he's been really prolific, and I really do like his style. And this documentary is no different. You know, sometimes I look at a documentary, and the subject might interest me. But sometimes you get to watching it, and it's just really dry in the presentation. And you can't say that about any of his documentaries, man. They have a pulse, a beat to them that helps you get through it they're also entertaining and they also inform you of the subject you know there's a lot of archival footage sometimes um sometimes if if possible um words from the person themselves and the people around them in their lives and their careers as well man but this is a really great effort and i highly recommend it yeah um it kind of kind of took me back i remember when biz you know a lot of hip-hop got started um, Biz Marquis was one of my favorites because it was always fun type rap because, you know, j um, Just a Friend was like one of my mm -hmm. favorite, you know, songs that he did. And um, it's just, it, it's just, it, it didn't have to be, even though back then they were just really pretty much talking about their, their style and um, fashion, like I, my Adidas and stuff. Um, this was before Gangster Rap got started and everything, but um he would just be out there having fun and mm -hmm. i kind of liked how they showed all this in the um doc about him just interacting with other rappers and just one of these people that were would just show up places um mm -hmm. I, I think it was kind of messed up that he kind of was um in a foster fat you know foster home uh, with a group after his you know after his um that his mother passed and then his dad was just out of the picture or Something along those lines. I can't remember the the full details of it, but but you keep going. I might can find that in the background. Yeah, but I I I just really liked to where he was, you know, for the most part, a positive person and was trying to, you know, um, just had a love for hip hop and everything, and just took himself there. You know, he didn't didn't seem like he ever doubted himself on anything. What just he was just out there having fun and. Um, I, I, I just I just really appreciate him. Um, like when you look at this doc about, like you said, all the people he influenced and he, you know connections he made with people, you know, because little things like that kind of kind of um, change the world. You know, it doesn't it doesn't take much or a big a big um, event to happen, but it's just the little things that you know you just showing somebody kindness. You you introduce somebody to somebody, or you know mm -hmm. just him. Um, you know, just doing his thing, just being a positive person and just, you know, trying to be everybody's friend. And I, one thing I yeah. thought it was real cool is he was a bit of a nerd and a collector of things. So he had, mm -hmm. you know, his wife was pretty much going in their storage uh, room or whatever. 
um, and just showing all the stuff that he would have just from being a kid, you know, things like Gigantor, you know, ro- you know, um, toys and stuff like that. And, you know, he, he used to have, um, he, uh, he, like back in the day, um, before like video games were really like a big deal, those handheld like baseball games and stuff like that. He had stuff like that. He had like Charlie's mm-hmm. Angels action figures and stuff like that, you know, you know, and, you know, so that he had. Yeah. In this collection or whatever, but I just thought that was like really, you know, cool for, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, it's cool, else. man. Because um, a lot of people don't know he actually lived in Maryland. I think out in a Laurel, that's where he was living, you know, for for you know most of his, his later years, and um, <clears throat> he still traveled. He still did uh, DJ gigs, mostly um performances and stuff. But uh, one of the things uh, we got this local venue to film more, and. Before he got sick, he was having like monthly parties there, and that was a big thing. And, and um, he would always sell them out, you know, really big crowds come through. I got a friend, uh, you know, shout out to Rudy, and uh, he'd always say, you know, he, he packed the house, and the crowds were good because he, well, in those instances, he was just playing music. Like he just okay. took on the role of a DJ and just played music and kept the people dancing and, and drinking and whatever. And um, interesting fact about his collection, man, um, there's a National Hip Hop Museum in DC. That open um not too long ago. They they actually have like a this Hall of Fame thing they've been doing, you know, over the years, inducting, you know, various rappers and stuff. But they've got a huge collection of memorabilia. And some of that stuff is actually from Biz's personal collection, man. You know, so I don't know if they coordinated with the wife to get some of those items, you know, put in there. And um, shout out to her, man, because there's a interesting wraparound thing that they do in this film where they're actually showing Biz in his final, I guess, um, uh, months in the hospital you know fighting this COVID that ultimately killed him and it's so crazy because he's kind of represented as this puppet laying in the hospital bed who kind of looks like uh one of those uh crank yankers, crank yankers. yeah that's what I, I was, yeah. was kind of wondering if it was the crank yanker guy that did you know did the puppet and it's crazy because his wife real life wife is actually interacting with this puppet so that's crazy to me that she would step up and volunteer to kind of recreate you know probably the darkest moments in his life you know I, I would guess but even watching that there are moments where it's injected with some humor like like you see when a nurse comes in the room and she's trying to get him to um i guess squeeze the ball to keep him active keep his brain yeah. activity up and he can't speak he's not verbal at this time and he just grabs a ball and throws it at her you know just to mess with her and she's like dang it biz <laughs> Yeah, like it's, yeah. it's, it's it's a really wild thing man to juxtapose that but you know it's a little awkward at first but i think it works man i think it just kind of also helps to see what you know he was going through in those those moments man so a guy that, that i could imagine would probably take over any room they were in just being fun cracking jokes and just you know <laughs> just telling grand crazy stories and all of a sudden he can't do that and he's also really sick so that's kind of really wild man just to, i guess maybe that was the intention to help us you know um um empathize with what you know he was going through at the time but, but it's a really good documentary i really love like i said the presentation and then later in life when he go on and, and become at this point he's biz marky and i think it's cool that he's showing up on stuff like sexy Man street and, yep. and, and all this nickelodeon and shows yeah and um and um even um uh the cameo and um and uh, Men in Black, you know, like, like it's, it's crazy, man. Like, like, so, like, he was a giant, but like a quiet giant, man. I think when I wrote that I was watching this and, and I had watched it, my review was basically, you know, Bismarck, he lived a beautiful life. And that, that's really yeah. what it was. You know, you don't really have anyone saying anything bad about him. He just, you know, did just try to bring joy to the people, man, you know, with his music and just, you know, you know, helping people out, man. And that's cool. Yeah, I, I, like I said, I really thought it was a real cool, you know, doc about him. Yeah.